Hello and welcome back to another video of Turtles All the Way Down. All life on Earth, including us humans, have been facing ever-increasing threats to our existence. Whether the potential threats are from the Earth or biology itself, such as from supervolcanoes or global pandemics, from space, such as from collisions with large meteors or comets, blasts from nearby supernovas, or solar instabilities, or from our own technology and its byproducts, like from climate change, nuclear or bio war, ecological collapse, or even out of control AI, our sobering existential risk list keeps growing over time. There seems to be a lot of ways that humanity can find its end. Paleontologists and biologists have known for some time now that a full 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever existed on Earth have perished, mostly from mass extinctions. Just as there is a welcomed and ever-cherished flourishing of life, there is the natural and inevitable transition to death. Even stars themselves have life cycles of birth and death. So it stands to reason that our species, Homo sapiens, too, will inevitably fade away with time. Is there a way, even if very roughly, to determine when this may happen? In fact, there does appear to be so, and it is called the doomsday argument. That's what we'll be discussing in this video. In 1969, the Princeton astrophysicist J. Richard Gott visited the Berlin Wall and predicted that in 1993 it would no longer exist. The Berlin Wall fell in 1990. However, his confidence level in this prediction was 50%. In 1993, he also looked up 44 Broadway plays and predicted time ranges for how long they each would last. Again, he was correct, and for all of them. But this time he did it with 95% confidence. In other words, he was 95% sure that his prediction would be correct. How did he do it? Gott used some assumptions in his predictions. One of them is called the Copernican Principle. This assumption says that no particular times are more special than any other. For example, when thinking about the future, you don't want to give more weight to say 100 years from now rather than 50 years from now. So the present date also is no more special than yesterday's or tomorrow's. That's the Copernican principle. It's named as such because it was Copernicus who showed that we are not actually the center of the universe. Our place in space is no more special than the rest of the cosmos. So too with time. Another assumption got made was that there will indeed be a beginning and an end to the thing being predicted. That is, it will not last forever. We'll call this the epochal assumption. This too seems quite reasonable. Can you name anything that you are sure has existed indefinitely? You'd be hard pressed, but you can name plenty that don't. Events and things have starts and ends. And with close to absolute certainty, even our species, Homo sapiens, will have an end as well. So with these assumptions, the Copernican principle and the epochal assumption, how did Gott reason through to his predicted end times? Just a little warning, the upcoming discussion has a bit of calculations. They are simple, but they may be confusing to a few. Just stay with me and you'll see the surprising punchline at the end. Let's start by visualizing the epoch, that is the full lifetime of the thing we want to predict the end time for. We'll represent it as a band of time. It has a start and an end. We'll label the start as 0% and the end as 100% of the total time it exists. 
we've now applied the epochal assumption. Let's say it represents the length of time that the Berlin Wall lasts. When Gott was making his prediction, his present time was obviously somewhere within this band, right? He just had no idea where. Was he closer to the beginning, closer to the end, or somewhere in the middle? He didn't know. So he applied the Copernican principle. Because we aren't giving any particular time a special place for us to be, he just dropped himself somewhere in the middle. Next, he decided on what percent confidence level he wanted his prediction to be. When we make that choice, we represent it by placing a band within our epoch that extends that percentage across the entire epoch, across the middle. So, for example, if we want a confidence level of 95%, we would place a band within our epoch that covers 95% of it. If we want our prediction to be 50% confident, we place a band in the middle that is 50% as wide as our epoch. If 25% confident, we'll be 25% as wide as the total, and so on. What we've done is demonstrated that we will find ourselves, say, with 50% confidence, somewhere within this middle part of the epoch we are concerned with. The next thing Gott needed to do was to determine how long from his present time the end of the Berlin Wall was. This will be a time range, not a single time. This range is calculated by looking at the beginning and the end points of our confidence level band and determine how far each is away from the end of the epoch. So, for example, if we are using a 50% confidence level and our present time happen to be here at the 25% mark, then we still have 75% more time before we reach the end. That means we therefore have three more 25% period lengths before reaching that end. That's calculated by taking 75% and dividing it by the beginning point of the confidence level, 25%. That gives three. Next, we similarly calculate how far away the end of the confidence band is from the end time. Here, we are 75% through our entire epoch. Doing the same calculation as before, we take 25% the percentage of time until the end, and divide it by 75%. That gives one-third. What the three and one-third mean is that those are the time range factors from the end times. Lastly, we need to know how long ago the beginning was from our present time. So, in the case of Gott's Berlin Wall prediction, he was at the wall in 1969 that was eight years from the time it began. Gott used a 50% confidence level and was there eight years from the time it began. He took that eight years and multiplied it by one third and then did it again with eight years times three. So Gott found that the Berlin Wall would end any time from eight third years to 24 years from then. That is, any time from 1971 to 1993. The Berlin Wall began its demolition in 1990, well within Gott's prediction. As mentioned, when we apply this reasoning to forecast humanity's end, it is called the Doomsday Argument. Actually, the Doomsday Argument uses population numbers to make this prediction but it can similarly use years like we're doing instead. To apply the calculation, we first need to know how long humanity has existed. Anthropologists have found that Homo sapiens appeared on the scene in Africa around 200,000 years ago when we diverged from an ancestral species. Depending on how confident we want to be in our prediction, we can run the calculations. So, based upon everything we just discussed, we find that with 50% confidence, humanity has around 67,000 
to 600,000 years from now before it ends. If we want greater confidence, then our time range will expand. So with 90% confidence, we have 10,500 to 3.8 million years to go. The interesting thing about this calculation is that it can be applied to pretty much any situation where we hope to get some insight into how much longer anything will last, given how long it has already existed. Gott, as mentioned, demonstrated its power by also applying it to Broadway plays and other situations. Needless to say, there have been several critiques of this argument. Some attack the assumptions. Perhaps the Copernican principle can't really be applied to the human species. That is, different times of our existence may be more important than others. Maybe the importance of each passing millennia that humanity has been around increases. Another critique has been that we can really know that we are actually living in the first 5% of humanity's lifespan, say. Or perhaps we can know that we are actually at the last 5% of humanity's lifespan. These arguments would make the Copernican principle moot. Personally, I don't think these rebuttals are convincing. How can we know that we are indeed closer to the end or the beginning without also knowing a much tighter end date range? Of course, also we may live much longer or much shorter than our prediction says. But that isn't the point of the doomsday argument because we are talking about probabilities. So when we give a confidence level, we are essentially giving a probability that has that much percentage of being correct. We can never be 100% certain. So what does the end of Homo sapiens mean? The most obvious and pessimistic interpretation would mean that our species ends in a violent or catastrophic extinction, such as through any one of the previously mentioned extinction events, nuclear war, meteor impact, climate change, etc. But there are less pessimistic and even much more optimistic potential alternatives that end our species. Maybe we change to something entirely different. Our technology is such that we have been integrating so much with it that perhaps eventually we almost literally merge with and become indistinguishable from it. This scenario will end our species as we know it. We already see hints of it today, from virtual reality to neural implants, from artificial limbs, joints, and organs to biomonitors and facial reconstructions. The sprout sees humanity as ending gradually by becoming something entirely new and transforming instead from a biological animal to something very different and perhaps vastly more improved through our own design and creation. Homo sapiens to Homo technologicus. This way of thinking is called transhumanism. Of course, right now, this raises some serious ethical and moral questions. But the trajectory our species seems to be heading is by this route. Another possible end to humanity could see us again gradually change, but through our natural biological evolution, into an entirely different species. While I don't personally see this as feasible any longer, due to our great control of our own environment, it is at least a possibility. An alternative way that humanity may end may not actually be an end per se, but more of a location shift. Our home throughout our entire species history has been on this single planet, Earth. However, we are fast becoming a space-faring society where we will gradually start making other worlds our home as well. In this way, we will make it next to impossible for humanity to really end through a world-ending catastrophe, as we will spread ourselves throughout the cosmos. The target will be much more difficult to destroy. We will have become a Homo Galacticus. As the great Soviet rocket pioneer 
Konstantin Tchaikovsky once said, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but one cannot live in a cradle forever. It is rather surprising that we can actually predict with some certainty the ending of something, knowing only how long it has so far lasted. With a couple of assumptions, the Copernican Principle and the Epochal Assumption, and knowing how long our situation has lasted, we can forecast with varying degrees of confidence when the end will occur. This calculational argument has many applications in the sciences, economics, and philosophical domains. Applying the calculation to humanity's lifetime gives the doomsday argument. The calculation shows that humanity will probably last another few thousand to millions of years. But even then, our species may not really end, but instead may find itself in an entirely different form than Homo sapiens. Nothing in our beautiful universe lasts forever. But this does not mean that our ending cannot also be a beautiful one. Thank you for staying with me and turtles all the way down. Please consider subscribing to this channel and watching and liking our other videos on the big questions that we ask. I'm looking forward to sharing more discussions with you in the future. So until then, stay safe and bye for now.